<coughs> it's a pleasure to actually the, uh, present our some of the work actually during well, this workshop. So basically, as I actually the Dr. Fupart introduced, I'm going to briefly talk about uh, like how we can uh, modulate and also image the interaction between cell and extracellular matrix. So we can contribute to that to elaborate the tissue regeneration and also better understand the uh, pathogenesis related to the cancer. So basically, one of the actually our the focus in the uh, the <coughs> group is to develop a biomaterial system that allows us to the improve the management of the vascular disease in terms of the detection of the vascular defects and also repair of the defective vasculature and further regeneration of the new blood vessels. So in this regard, we have been developing a variety of the material system, including the nanoparticles conjugated with the imaging contrast agent. So we can improve the quality of the MR images for the detection of the vascular defects. And also we have been developing nanomaterial system that delivers the stem cells <coughs> to the target site so we can improve the therapeutic efficacy of the stem cells for the vascular repair. And also we have been developing uh, the hydrogel material that improves the regeneration of the new vasculature in the tissues of the interest. So in parallel, we have been also developing biomaterial systems that allows us to better understand the behavior of the cells in a 3D matrix. So in today's talk, I'm going to more focus on describing that material design for the three-dimensional cell culture. So basically, the, our tissue actually body consists of the variety of different tissues, and one of the major components of this tissue is the extracellular matrix and the cells, which is a living organism. And then that actually should be provided with the proper amount of the oxygen and the nutrients, and also they should be able to remove their metabolic products and the carbon dioxide. And throughout that process, they can proliferate. So they can generate it at a new number of the cells at the controlled rate. Or in case of the certain disease, such as a cancer, they are going to proliferate at the uncontrolled rate. And also, they can differentiate to the well, specific cell types. So they can actually generate that the cells responsible for regeneration and also pathogenesis. And also, they are secreting variety of the proteins and the cytokines that is also related to several biological process. And these cells are typically were surrounded by the extracellular matrix three-dimensionally. Although some of the cells, such, such as epithelial cells, they form the kind of a 2D membrane on the surface of the tissue. And this extracellular matrix mostly consists of the collagens, which has a form of the fibers. And also there are lots of the different cell addition proteins, such as a fibronectin, vitronectin, raminin, and so on. And also this extracellular matrix can sequester several growth factors and cytokines that is secreted by the cells itself. <coughs> so therefore, in terms of the, uh, actually this uh, schematic description, where these actually cell behavior is not actually, uh, is going to be determined not only by the, their own epigenetics, but also it's going to be influenced by the several extracellular environmental factors, which includes the soluble factors such as the cytokine and growth factors. And also it's going to be influenced by the external mechanical force. And also it's going to be controlled by the insoluble signals from the extracellular matrix together with the signals from the neighboring cells. So basically, there are the lots of the different factors are going to orchestrate together in order to control gene expression and further tissue formation of the single cells. And actually, Professor Myung also presented uh, with the nice actually pictures of the orchestra. So then actually according to the, the many in vivo studies, there are increasing evidence that uh, several biological processes such as uh, aging or the eating and drinking habits and also several chronic diseases such as uh, diabetics and cancer can significantly change several properties of the extracellular matrix in terms of the, the type and density of the cell addition proteins, mechanical properties of the tissue, and also <coughs> the other X-ray chemical properties as well as the permeability. So for example, if the, the patient, X-ray person has a diabetics, 
they are going to have a tissue which is softer than normal tissue and also the permeability is going to be changed. And also in case of the person has a cancer, the tissue is known to be a little stiffer than the normal tissue and also it's going to have a lower permeability and in addition to that, they are, they are going to have more cell addition proteins such as a fibronectin in a tumor site. So therefore, in order to reproduce such changes in the chemical and mechanical properties of the extracellular matrix, people have been actually trying to use different types of biomaterial systems in order to use that for the 3D cell, cell, cell culture. So these materials include that, uh, such like a uh, microporous matrix, which was imaged by the CT, or by fiber mesh in order to mimic the structure of the collagen fiber. And also they use the hydrogel material that is formed from the linking between the polymers dissolved in the aqueous solution. I don't know that uh, how many actually people here actually have an experience with the biomaterials, but uh, these actually hydrogel materials are increasingly used for this in vitro three-dimensional cell culture because first of all, like uh, the hydrated condition of the gel is very similar to the natural extracellular matrix and also it facilitates the in situ encapsulation of the cells in the gel matrix and also we can control the chemical and physical properties of the matrix. However, actually current challenge with this material design is related to the two complicated dependence between material properties. So for example, if we want to control mechanical stiffness of the matrix in order to reproduce the changes in mechanical properties caused by cancer or diabetics, that always actually changes the permeability of the matrix. So then it's going to be very hard to understand what is the individual effects of the matrix and further combine the effects of the matrix properties on determining actually the uh, cellular phase and also secretion activities of the several proteins. <coughs> so therefore, actually, they, in a biomaterial design, there have been increasing well, interest in the couple such dependence between the material properties. So we can independently control individual properties, and then we can actually further elaborate the, the function of the materials on the, the cellular behavior, uh, actually responsible for the tissue regeneration and developmental process. So in this regard, actually, in today's talk, I'm going to show actually three different topics. So in the first part, I'm going to show how we can, well, control several properties of the synthetic, actually, hydrogel system, which means that the, the material formed by the synthetic polymers, and then actually further use that for the vascularization process. And then in the second topic, I'm going to briefly show how we can also control properties of the gel formed by the physical association between collagen fibers and then use that for the three-dimensional cancer cell culture, especially to understand how mechanical stiffness influences the cancer cells, the malignancy. And then in the third topic, I'm going to briefly show how we can also interrogate the interaction between cell and the extracellular matrix using the FRET technique, actually, which was uh, very nicely introduced by the Professor Myung, actually, in the first part. So then actually I'm going to <coughs> start with the first topic in regards to the synthetic polymers. So basically in the, well, the three-dimensional cell culture in a hydrogel, it's very typical to mix the cells of the interest with the polymers dissolved in the water and then activate the cross-linking reaction. And then we can interrupt the cells in a hydrogel matrix with the properties actually we wanted to achieve. But actually, as I mentioned, <coughs> it's very, very challenging to decouple dependence between well, several different properties of the hydrogel systems. So this is going to be the kind of a nice example, actually, I want to address. So this is a very famous paper which talks about the how mechanical stiffness of the gel influenced the cancer cells' malignancy. So breast cancer cells was used in this study and then they changed the stiffness of the collagen gel to study the influence of the matrix on the well, cancer cells malignancy. And then they actually demonstrated that, okay, increasing collagen concentration is going to change the mechanical stiffness from this number to the, the other number. And then they reported that the cancer cells become more malignant in the stiff hydrogel system 
which was purely made by collagen gel. And as I mentioned, they changed the collagen concentration. So then, <coughs> of course, actually, they could change the mechanical stiffness. But as they increase the number of the collagens in a solution, they are actually changing permeability of the matrix. That's going to influence the cancer cells activity. In addition to that, collagen is going to bind with the specific cell integrins, such as a beta-1 integrins. Therefore, they are changing the number of the, the bonds between cell integrin and the matrix, which is also known to influence the cancer cells malignancy. So therefore, although the authors actually reported that, this is the pure effect of the mechanical stiffness. In a standpoint of the material scientist, we actually think that uh, everything was changed. Mechanical stiffness was changed, permeability was changed, and number of the cell addition protein was changed. And then it's not actually, we cannot actually <coughs> address that. It's purely well, controlled by the mechanical stiffness. So this is why actually we are interested in decoupling the dependence between material properties. And then that's going to actually contribute to better understanding cellular behavior in the matrix and also get the kind of a more actually precise information from that effort. So the basically, so the, therefore, actually what we are focusing now is that the, the especially like uh, the how we can decouple where the mechanical properties, permeability, and types of the, the cell addition proteins in the design of the material systems. Somehow, actually, the background was too bright. But <coughs> so one of the actually approaches, we can first of all decouple the dependence between uh, these type and uh, density of the cell addition proteins from the other property are very simple. So basically, we can mix cell addition peptide or proteins of the interest with the polymers that forms the gel. So we can actually change the type, and also we can change the number. Or the other actually approach is to simply conjugate the cell addition oligopeptide to the polymers that use, used, the, used to, to form the hydrogel system. So this is a kind of example to show how we can conjugate the, the peptide. So basically, the peptide used here was the peptide containing arginine, glycine, and aspartic acid sequence, which is a cell addition domain of the fibronectin. And then we connected that to the alginate molecule, which was used to form the hydrogel. And the simple chemistry was used to couple this uh, peptide to the polymer. And then we actually can just present the different number of the cell addition peptide on the gel surface or in the gel without actually changing other properties. So therefore, for example, <coughs> here we incorporated the spermatogonial stem cells in the hydrogel and cultured them over seven days. And then we tried to see how many cells remained viable by staining cells with the MTT reagent, which can positively stain the metabolically active cells. So then as you can see, the gel without any well, cell addition peptide, they do not have much kind of uh, viable cells in the matrix. But in contrast, if we actually look at the cells in the gel modified with the cell addition peptide, they can grow in a 3D matrix and form a kind of uh, the colonies, which has an average diameter around 30 micrometer. And also we could see that they are metabolically uh, very active, as uh, confirmed with the positive staining with the MTT reagent. In addition to that, we actually further examined that uh, whether this cell addition peptide can improve the tissue formation. So in this uh, study, we encapsulated a chondrocyte, which forms the cartilage tissues, and then implanted that on the back of the mouse. And then after a month, we found that the uh, hydrogel without any well, cell addition peptide just uh, forms a very fibrous soft tissue. In contrast, we could see that uh, this uh, cell addition peptide conjugated to the gel really actually uh, helped the cells form a very hard and opaque the cartilage-like tissue on the back, which is very similar to the original cartilage tissue because of this uh, cell addition the peptides. <coughs> and then also that uh, the uh, the other uh, approach we also adopted uh, was that uh, how we can control the inverse dependence between stiffness and permeability of the gel. So basically, as you can see, like uh, mm, 
if we simply will change the cross-linking density of the certain gels, for example, using the polyethylene glycol diaclate, so this is a polymer which is typically used for 3D cell culture. And then if we actually change the their concentration or change the molecular weight, we can basically change the cross-linking density. And then if we increase the cross-linking density, we can change, we increase the elastic modulus, which represents the stiffness of the gel. So you can see that the linear increase of the, the stiffness. But in contrast, actually, the, uh, if we increase the cross-linking density, the swelling ratio, which represents the gel permeability, goes down. So this is a kind of a typical inverse dependence between stiffness and permeability of the hydrogel used for the three-dimensional cell culture. So actually, how we could actually decouple this the inverse dependence, we just uh, came up with a very simple idea. Maybe if we incorporate the, this polysaccharide molecule, where in this actual study we use the alginate modified with the methacrylic group into this polyethylene glycol diacrylate hydrogel and then induce the cross-linking reaction between these two polymers, we can probably tune the inverse dependence between stiffness and permeability. So the reason why we actually came up with this hypothesis was actually from the understanding of the structure of this, uh, you know, our own tissues. So basically, our extracellular matrix consists of the collagen and the cell addition proteins. In addition to that, there are lots of the glycosaminoglycan molecules, which is a kind of a polysaccharide molecules. And as you can see, this chemical structure, these polymers present the several uh, the, uh, well, carboxyl group, which is a polar charged group. And also, they present lots of the hydroxyl group. So these hydroxyl group actually are known to facilitate the water transport in uh, our skin and variety of different tissues. So then, in case of the person, if we actually, as we get older, or uh, probably as we drink too much on a daily basis, basically the cells in our tissue is going to lose the ability to produce these actually glycosaminoglycan molecules. And then we actually, our tissue is going to have a problem in terms of the dehydration. And then actually we may actually get the kind of lots of the wrinkles in the forehead and the skins because of the reduction of these glycosaminoglycan molecules. So in order to recapitulate this the important function of the glycosaminoglycan molecule, we ended up putting these actually polymers into this uh, synthetic hydrogel system. So basically in this actually hydrogel design, we kept total polymer concentration constant, and then we reduced the mass fraction of the, this polyethylene glycol while increasing mass fraction of this alginate. And we found that increasing mass fraction of the alginate were significantly increased the elastic modulus around the, from 20 to the 200 kilopascal. So in terms of the tissue stiffness, you can assume that this is 20 kilopascal is uh, similar to the stiffness of the muscle tissue. And then 200 kilopascal is uh, similar to the stiffness of the cartilage tissue in our nose. But in actually, you know, it, despite this significant change of the elastic modulus, we could uh, see that the kind of a gradual increase of the swelling ratio, which means that uh, this polymer actually does something you know, in the coupling dependence between stiffness and permeability. So we could even actually prove that enhanced water permeability using MRI systems. So basically, MRI imaging is developed by measuring the relaxation rate of the water in the matrix. So therefore, you can assume that the relaxation rate of the water inside the gel is going to be much slower than the water outside the gel because that the water is going to associate with the hydrogel matrix. So therefore, you can distinguish the water inside the gel and water outside the gel using the, the MRI system, and especially in this image, you can assume that the, the red color intensity indicates that the more water that went into the hydrogel system. So then, as you can see, well, actually, these two different gel, the hydrogel, which actually was formed with the alginate molecules, that actually facilitates the water entry much faster as compared to the pure uh, polyethylene glycol diacrylate hydrogel, although the gel actually the made with uh, this uh, polysaccharide was stiffer than the other ones. So therefore, in terms of the bioavailability,
of the, the cells, especially if we use the uh, fibroblast in this study, we could see that the hydrogel prepared with the, 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 these two polymers supports the cell viability. So we can actually retain more than 50% of the cells remain viable in a 3D matrix three, throughout the seven days of the cell culture. But in contrast, to the cells were actually cultured in this uh, soft hydrogel system, just the, the uh, lost their viability because of their limited uh, permeabilities. And also in terms of the secretion activities, we actually uh, were interested in using these cells for the revascularization. So we tried to check how active these cells are to secrete the proangiogenic vectors, such as the vascular and the trial growth vectors. And we found that uh, this uh, stiff hydrogel system can greatly support cellular secretion of the uh, proangiogenic vectors, especially for vascular and the trial growth vectors throughout the five days of the cell culture. And we could not see any kind of a cell secretion activities in this uh, soft, uh, pure polyethylene glycol hydrogel system. So then actually by, by looking at this uh, result, we just uh, wondered whether we can actually use this hydrogel system to kind of uh, promote vascularization in the tissues. So basically, we, if I introduce a little bit briefly, like uh, as I mentioned, the cell is the, the major component of the tissues. And we, in order to retain their viability and also their metabolic activities, we should provide them with the proper amount of the oxygen and nutrients. So this is why that the we actually our body is highly vascularized. And then if actually there is uh, any problem in the vasculature, such as uh, clogging or the swelling or leakage, eventually the blood vessel is going to be ruptured or it's going to promote the pro-inflammation. So therefore, actually, people have been interested in replacing a defective vasculature with the new ones. Where by regenerating big-sized blood vessels, such as artery, or promoting angiogenesis, which is characterized by the sprouting of the new vasculature from the pre-existing vasculature. So it's very well known that the vascular and the trial growth factor, termed as a VASIF, is actually promoting the, the, this sprouting process throughout the binding, proliferation, and lumen formations. And then it's actually widely, you are, well, it's very common to deliver several growth vectors or transplant cells that can endogenously secrete these growth vectors into the tissue of the interest in order to promote this vascularization. But in a current, actually, the uh, challenge of the re revascularization is related to the uh, poor controllability of the vascular spacing. So as you can see, this uh, tissue were exposed to the vascular and the three growth vector we could see that the significant increase of the vascular density. However, actually, this vasculature is highly disorganized. Therefore, it's not functional to provide the proper amount of the oxygen. But in contrast, if we look at our normal capillary network in the tissues, you can notice that there is a very regular spacing between the vasculature, such as about 300 to the 500 micrometer. So we actually had an interest in reproducing such actually vasculature with nice uh, spacings. So this is actually kind of our idea. We came up with uh, this uh, hydrogel uh, designed to decouple stiffness and permeability. So basically, like uh, as I showed in the previous uh, slides, like by it, where the uh, incorporating the polysaccharide in a cell encapsulating hydrogel, we could uh, support the cellular secretion of the proangiogenic factors in a 3D matrix. And then we actually proposed that if we introduce the well, optimal size of the holes in the gel matrix, so these actually growth factors will be secreted only through these holes. And then at the implantation site, there is going to be a local increase of the growth factors around these circles. And then the, the and the three cells in a pre-existing vasculature is going to be stimulated to well, promote sprouting but it's going to be actually following these uh, circular patterns. And then eventually they can actually generate that the new vasculature, which exactly follows these uh, circular patterns of the cell encapsulating hydrogen. So in order to the, actually the, uh, make this uh, the, uh, where hydrogen, as I mentioned, we used uh, this decoupled control technique. 
In addition to that, we tried to optimize the size of the, these micro channels. So we actually collaborated with the Professor Jia in the mechanical engineering. He has an expertise of the computational simulation. So we actually came up with a, a very simple equation to relate the molecular flux from the gel to the geometry of these micro channels. And then we actually found that uh, maybe actually the micro channel diameter should be around actually 700 micrometer in order to achieve this localization of the proteins, especially for the hydrogen with the thickness around the 200 micrometer. So in order to design, actually assemble this uh, the hydrogen with the controlled diameter of the micro channel, we also collaborated with the Professor Rashid Bashar, who is in the bioengineering. And we actually used his 3D printer technique in order to incorporate the control the size of the holes in this cell encapsulating hydrogen. In actually this study, we changed the diameter of the micro channel from 0 to 300 to 500 and 1,000 micrometer. And then we implanted that on the chicken embryo membrane. In order, yes? OK. <laughs> So this one, actually, you can assume that this is a small bath, which it contains the cells and the also gel-forming solutions. And then there is an elevator that is going to be designed to move along G direction. And then the upper part is going to have a laser unit that actually is going to activate the cross-linking reaction on top of these platforms. And that was designed to move along X, Y direction. And then using the computer software, so we can actually uh, orchestrate x, y movement of the laser unit together with the g directional movement of the platform. And then that's how actually we can generate that, uh, this, the predefined forms of the, the hydrogen system encapsulating cells throughout the in-situ cross-linking reactions. Is laser uh, supposed to just going to initiate some chemical reaction? Yes. How, how, how do you uh, control the size of this uh, structure? We spent quite a lot of the time to optimize that, uh, the laser intensity and the concentration of the initiator in order to the control the resolution of the each spot of which will be cross-linked to form the gel. Okay, so once yeah. you have this calibration, it's pretty fitable? Or? Yeah, 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 that's actually kind of uh, what we actually did as the first step for this 3D printing. And then we implanted that on the chicken embryo membrane. And then we tried to look at the vasculature formed actually throughout the seven days of the incubation. And this is the result. Basically, the tissue covered with the gel without any microchannels, but the, that can actually uh, support the cell secretion of the proangiogenic factor. Basically, we do not see any kind of uh, interesting vasculature. However, if we actually implant these actually hydrogel system, we could uh, see that the interesting where the um, formation of the vascular patterns that exactly follows the, the size of these individual circles and also spacing between the circles. So that's why you can see that the different size of the individual vascular pattern. But the, if we actually we go to the two high actually the <coughs> circles, as we were predicted with the computational simulation, we could not see any kind of a vascular patterns because protein was not localized around these circles. So actually, we uh, don't have the experimental data to show the localization of the proteins around the these circles. Basically, we assumed that with the computational simulation. But we expect that if we can use the Professor Myung's single molecular imaging, basically, we can monitor the localization of the proteins around the these circles in the tissue. That's actually kind of what we actually expect. Uh, <clears throat> I think that uh, that's an issue of the elasticity of the vasculature. So basically, we tried to make a circular pattern, but eventually, due to the, their own well, elastic property, they ended up with a kind of a square structure. So that's a kind of a, yeah, that because that's uh, what we are dealing. Yeah, we we the what actually you are looking at is that the real vasculature. It's not a kind of a simple like a micro channels engineered by actually the. Uh, Material scientist. So that's therefore we have to actually understand that the kind of the way actually the, the living organism designed actually their own tissue structure. I guess yeah, it's fascinating. So now actually what we are actually also further trying to do is that uh, like uh, the 
just uh, it's out of focus of this talk, but uh, we actually are implanting that on the heart, uh, actually which was damaged by cardiac infarction. So we hope that uh, this controlled release of the growth factor that actually is going to help the, the treatment of the heart tissue. And also that uh, we actually are uh, trying to make this hydrogel be self-folding so we can deliver that to this target site in a non-invasive manner throughout the needle or catheter. So this one actually was made uh, well, you, by the so-called self-folding technique. So as you can see, this hydrogel can self-fold or actually the, uh, into the form of the ring in a, the uh, implanted tissue where throughout the kind of a swelling actually behavior. I don't want to go into the details, but uh, you can see that the kind of a self-folding actually into the, <coughs> the ring shape. Right, so actually throughout actually this decoupled control, I could actually show that we actually we can generate an interesting biomedical device that controls the cellular secretion activities and also the release pattern. So we can generate that uh, new functional vasculature at the target tissues. So then I don't know that how much actually time I spent now, so but the, and I'm going to move to the actually second topic, actually how we can also control the properties of the natural hydrogel system, which is also widely used for three-dimensional cell culture and the transplantation. So somehow I found that the clinicians actually prefer this natural gel system as compared to the synthetic hydrogel systems. So anyway. So what actually we tried to do here was that uh, like uh, <coughs> we wanted to decouple the stiffness and uh, the permeability dependence of the collagen gel, which is widely used for three-dimensional culture. I don't know how many of you actually experienced the uh, collagen gel for me actually preparation. Have you tried that for in vitro? It's going to be a kind of a very easy protocol, which is available on the website. So you can just uh, simply uh, the type one collagen solution. And then if you mix some of the actually component, you can make a gel. So you can try that. The issue is that the collagen solution is a little bit expensive. But, uh, <coughs> but how actually they formed the gel? Basically, like uh, you can assume that the individual collagen actually molecule forms a fibril throughout the self-association. And then the individual fibril is going to form the thick fibers. And then these fibers are going to be actually associated three-dimensionally. We can actually see that the kind of uh, or formation of the viscoelastic hydrogel matrix. So what actually we tried to do here was that uh, we wanted to just uh, the, uh, induce the cross-linking reaction between individual collagen fibrils, so using this polymer. So basically this polymer, which is a polyethylene glycol disuccinimidyl ester, it has a reactive groups to the amine groups of the collagen molecules. So we can actually stiffen individual collagen fibrils so we actually expected that this cross-linking reaction between individual collagen fiber is not going to be hamper the formation of the collagen fiber. So we can still retain this uh, original microstructure, but individual collagen fiber is going to be stiffer by this cross-linking reaction. So this is the kind of our characterization. By introducing this uh, actually synthetic polymer, we could see that the elastic modulus goes up from 0.7 to the 4.0 kilopascal. In terms of the tissue stiffness, you can assume that uh, this gel is uh, as soft as the fat tissue, but this gel actually is a stiffer, uh, is as stiff as the normal liver tissues. But in contrast, uh, according to the fluorescence recovery after photo bleaching technique, which is widely used to evaluate diffusivity of the molecules, we could not see much change of the molecular diffusivities. And then we incorporated the um, hepatocalcinoma cells in order to see how these matrix of stiffness influence the cancer cells malignancy. And as you can see, like uh, throughout the five days of the cell culture, we could see that the cancer cells incorporated in this soft hydrogel system underwent active proliferation in a 3D matrix. In contrast, the same cells incorporated in a stiff hydrogel, which have an uh, elastic modulus around 4.0 kilopascal, also underwent the proliferation, but, but uh, very controlled actually manner. So you can see that a very nice spheroidal actually structure, which is more actually looks like a kind of a normal hepatoid-like structure. And then in terms of the integrin expression, we actually could see that uh, this big spheroid overexpresses cell actually <coughs> integrin beta 1, which means that uh, these cells actually uh, interact with the collagen matrix 
probably throughout the active matrix invasion. In contrast, we don't see much actually integrin expression on the small spheroid, but instead we could uh, see that the more active uh, expression of the e cadrin which represents the cell-cell adhesion. So that means that the, the same cells grown in the soft hydrogel overexpress integrin because they interact with the matrix. But the same cells cultured in a little stiffer hydrogel, they actually have a better association between the cells. So therefore, actually in terms of the detoxification activity of the P450, which is a typical biomarker of the hepatocarcinoma cells, we could see that the kind of active detoxification activity of the cancer cells in this stiff hydrogel, which is very similar to the hepatocytes. In contrast, the same cells grown in the soft gel, we don't see much detoxification activity. So that means that the, these actually cancer cells behaves more like a normal hepatocyte. But in contrast, this one actually, as it became very malignant, they don't have much actually detoxification activities. And then furthermore, we could see that they secreted the, the, uh, more proangiogenic factors. So you can see that the lots of the vascularization around this uh, cell spheroid at the implantation site. <coughs> so actually kind of uh, what I actually could uh, show is that uh, I didn't include that slide. But uh, as actually as uh, I mentioned in the beginning, the, the one original paper showed that increasing stiffness of the matrix stimulate uh, cancer cells be more malignant. But in our case, we actually could see that the uh, cancer cells in a soft gel become more malignant. So then what is it going on here? Actually, the, uh, is it going to be really due to the decoupled control of the mechanical stiffness and permeability? Or is it going to be related to the different types of the cancer cells? Or maybe actually cancer cells actually is going to recognize the mechanical stiffness depending on their actually kind of a tissue structure. So there are lots of the questions actually we can well, why it actually makes a difference between actually <coughs> this result and uh, the kind of a primary result actually that used the, the change of the collagen concentration in order to control mechanical stiffness. And furthermore, actually, we actually also tried to see how dynamic change of the matrix property can influence the cancer cells' malignancy. So basically, as I showed, if I actually cultured the, the, this hepatocarcinoma cells in a stiffer hydrogel made by the polyethylene glycol and the collagen, we could see that the small spheroid formation. But actually, we found that exposure of this hydrogel to the matrix metalloproteinase over a uh, controlled time period, we can actually decrease the elastic modulus in a transient manner. And then if we actually culture those cells exposed to the MMP molecules for another five days, we could uh, see that the cells in the gel exposed to this matrix metalloproteinase activates their active proliferation. So you can see that the lots of the increase of the or increase the size of the spheroids and also that the, they are interconnected together, which is a very typical for the malignant activities of the cancer cells. In addition to that, we could see that the, this uh, exposure of the gel to the MMP molecule turns on the overexpression of the integrin in the spheroid, but the, that actually turns off the e cadrin expression. So which means that the kind of uh, MMP decreases the matrix stiffness, and then it's going to control the cell adhesion to the matrix and also cell cell adhesions. In addition to that, they, they also turned off this detoxification activities. So you can see that the kind of a large actually kind of uh, the <coughs> size of the spheroid, which doesn't have any kind of a detoxification markers. In addition to that, we actually also had a chance to use this uh, actually hydrogel in order to examine the effects of the matrix stiffness on the skin tissue formation. Actually, this one actually work was actually done throughout the collaboration with the uh, professors uh, both part. And we found that the actually increasing stiffness of the gel from 0.7 to the 4.0 kilopascal stimulates the, the glycosaminoglycan molecular expression of the dermal fibroblast 
cultured in this uh, 3D matrix. And then they even actually could uh, generate a very well dense tissue, which was actually the, uh, characterized using the Steve Bopart's actually the 3D optical coherence topo tomography. I think that uh, he will actually show the, the underlying concept in the following talk, but that's actually what we also could demonstrate with uh, this hydrogen matrix. And then Boulder War, actually we were interested in interrogating how actually this mechanical stiffness influenced uh, the behavior of the cell clusters such as uh, embryoid body. So basically like uh, th this embryoid body consists of the embryonic cell and that actually is uh, formed by the active actually cell cell addition and then we actually wondered whether still kind of a stiff uh, substrate stiffness can modulate this co-differentiation of this embryonic embryoid body or towards the uh, cardiovascular lineage or you know, neuronal lineages. And I'm going to actually show briefly like uh, how actually the ma matrix influenced uh, this uh, co-differentiation. So basically what we found was that uh, if we simply put uh, this embryoid body on the gel with the elastic modulus around the 6 kilopascal, they promote the differentiation of the cells to the CD31 positive and the serial cells so they can form the individual well, nice blood vessel-like lumens. And then we also could see that the nice sheet formation of the cardiac <coughs> myocytes actually around this the EBs. But in contrast, the same actually embryoid body, which was placed on the stiff cell, we could not see much co-differentiation of the cells to the endothelial and also that the cardiac myocytes. So therefore, especially for the EBs actually cultured on the this soft cell, they could actually have a capability to contract as shown in this movie. So it's more like a kind of uh, very similar to the cardiac myocyte sheet that was demonstrated also in vitro. And also in case actually we culture them uh, in the media that promotes the neural differentiation, we could see that the better actually neural differentiation in the <coughs> embryoid body that was cultured on the hydrogel. In case of the cells actually uh, cultured in a suspended state, we don't see actually nice actually neural filament formation within actually this uh, cell cluster. So as we, you can see, like uh, the matrix can influence the function of the individual cells, but it also it can actually influence the, the differentiation of the uh, cell clusters as actually I demonstrated <coughs> here. So then, um, to 46. All right, so maybe actually five minutes. So yeah, I'm going to actually show that <coughs> very briefly. And then finally, kind of you may wonder that the how we can actually analyze uh, the, this such a actually uh, sophisticated interaction between cell and the matrix, especially in terms of the number of the cell <coughs> integrin and ligand bonds or kind of a cell contraction force. So actually kind of what we tried to use the FRET technique in order to interrogate such actually interaction between cell and the extracellular matrix. So I'm not going to actually go over the concept of the FRET because uh, the Professor Myung already showed that with the nice actually dense movies. So <coughs> basically what actually we tried to do here was to the label cell membrane with the FRET donor and also label the, the, the uh, gel forming polymers with the FRET acceptor. Especially like uh, we labeled the, the uh, cell addition peptide conjugated to the polymer with the rhodamine, which actually is widely used for the FRET acceptor. And then we expected that there is going to be a FRET if there is a specific bonding between integrin and this actually polymers, especially for the, this cell addition peptide. <coughs> and then we actually just basically like uh, put the cells labeled with these fluorescent molecules in the hydrogel labeled with this rhodamine molecule and then tried to see actually whether there is a decrease of the green fluorescence from the cell membrane due to the specific bi <coughs> binding in a 3D matrix. So this is an example of the FRET. Basically what you are looking at is the cells incorporated in the hydrogel without any cell addition peptide. So therefore, you can see that the bright green fluorescence from the cell membrane. But in case you put the same cells in the hydrogel, with <coughs> modified with the cell addition peptide, also labeled with rhodamine, we could not see any green fluorescence from the cell membrane. Instead, we could see that the, the uh, quite significant increase of the red fluorescence 
especially at the interface between cell and the extracellular matrix, as we actually quantified with the, this uh, imaging software. And then basically, we using this technique, we could uh, see that uh, we can tune the degree of the FRED with the number of the cell addition peptide. So in case actually we put uh, the, uh <coughs> we changed the, the number of the, the hydrogen, actually polymers conjugated with the single uh, number of the cell addition peptide. As we increased uh, the number of the peptide, we could see that the degree of the FRED actually was increased. And also, when we actually change the, the number of the cell addition peptide conjugated to the single polymer, we could see also that the degree of the FRED was increased. But in case of the control, such as a kind of a use of the <coughs> non-LGD sequence or kind of a simple incorporation of the rhodamine to the, the alginate, we could not see any kind of a FRED actually behavior. So overall, actually, kind of, uh, I hope that I could convince you that there is a way to actually elaborate to the control of the matrix properties and better understand the, the effects of the matrix on the cell function throughout today's talk. And also that I briefly showed that, that there is also analytical tools that allows us to interrogate the cell matrix interaction using FRED technique. And also that uh, there is uh, the uh, FRED-based technique that allows us to measure the force generated by cells. But I'm not going to actually to show that because that, uh, I have to finish up now. So I would like to thank actually the, my actually collaborators in this actually campus uh, and also outside the campus and also that the funding source and also actually the, uh, these are the my group members that actually had to work actually a lot under my <laughs> guidance. Thank you. Questions, please. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we tried to change the peg length, actually. If we change the, <coughs> well, first of all, the molecular weight of the peg we used here was around 400 Dalton. If we actually go beyond 1,000, we could see that the collagen, actually, I'm sorry, actually peg acts more like a kind of a static inhibitors. So they actually hamper the collagen fiber formation. And then, more interestingly, we could see that the collagen fiber becomes much thicker, but the gel is going to be very soft. And for uh, usually, well, I know that NHS is, it's not, doesn't do really well in the water-based solvent, so does it change you to what was your solvent for? Oh, well, actually, the uh, sushi immediately after, well, after itself is not soluble in water, but because it was conjugated to the pack, it was quite soluble in the water. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. do you, what do you think about the merit of being able to image that in real time? Do you think that the, that dynamic information is is going to be something new, or do you think just by imaging, you know, at these different time points that you've been doing? Well, I think that the dynamic, actually, Im actually, real time imaging is going to really help us to better understand the what actually how the matrix actually influenced the cells, because that the, well, according to the fundamental biology studies, actually matrix is also a dynamic entity. So the kind of, uh, we can actually manipulate that dynamic change of the well gel properties, and then it's going to be very interesting to see that how those dynamic changes influence the cellular behavior in a real time manner. So there are lots of actually things actually we can do if we can couple material design with the imaging tools. Yes. Yeah. Shape. Yeah, like, yeah. So, so have you tested that in vitro or like in your? Um, yeah, actually, we have uh, kind of lots of the in vitro actually characterization to okay. show that the, how the material formulation influences the degree of the folding. So, kind of uh, the behind actually principle is that uh, we basically made the bilayer the hydrogel. So, one layer actually doesn't have much swelling. The other layer actually has lots of the swelling. And then that uh, actually the part that is going to swell is going to actually kind of activate the folding process. And that also promoted vascularization. Well, yeah, and also that we found that uh, they can control the release well, rate of the molecules from the gel. And then we could actually promote the vascularization by controlling this release kinetics of the molecules.
do you envision um, you know, with these vascular, vascularized scaffolds, yeah. vascularity that you're inducing, how do you envision connecting that to the actual host vascular supply? Do you think that that will automatically diffuse, <coughs> or do you have to surgically, and I'm talking about the, the major, like say, arterioles or veins, mm -hmm. uh, or do you think that it's sufficient just to drop that into, a, say, a living host? Well, actually, what actually I expect is that the uh, angiogenesis is uh, more like a kind of uh, engraftment from the pre-existing vasculature. So there is going to be a nice connection, especially between the well, host blood vessel and the new blood vessel. But then also that what actually we are finding, according to also other studies, is that uh, even though there is a nice vasculature in the beginning, over time, the, our body is going to take over. And then it's going to kind of regenerate the, another vasculature, which is going to be more adaptable to our actually the uh, tissues. So I think that the kind of uh, the pattern the vasculature I showed, and also even the big artery which was which created throughout the tissue engineer, is going to be well, eventually turned over to our actually, own vasculature controlled by our host system. So that's, but actually we don't know yet. So if we actually again have the nice imaging tools, we can actually kind of monitor how the new vasculature is uh, the, uh, created and how the, that vasculature is going to be taken up by the host vasculature. Yes? Yeah, BGF, vascular endoscopy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Surgery response to So uh, I'm just wondering uh, so in biology, right, in the body, like how does the, uh, the, the biological system itself distribute this, this growth factor such that you see those beautiful patterns? Like, do we know how that happens? Like yeah, like uh, several studies show that the kind of there of the temporal such a kind of or provisional distribution of the so kind of a vasculature is going to follow that distribution of the growth factors. But how does that happen in the because, because yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a very interesting first step yeah. for mimicking what yeah. actually happens, right? So, but still, you have this localized Yeah, like uh, I, I'm not uh, the uh, expert in the developmental biology, but uh, I think that uh, some people actually demonstrate that uh, like um, control of the certain area that overexpressed uh, the vascular and the serial growth factor and show that the vasculature is just growing towards those kind of part in the body of the mouse. So that actually proves that the kind of our body actually somehow is uh, able to print the distribution of the growth factor in a kind of uh, desired actually manner. And then that's how actually we can generate a nice vasculature actually also I showed it with the electron microscopic picture. But the lots of the things actually is not that much understood yet in the vascular biology. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Uh,